out. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Home Recording Made Easy dot com podcast. My name is David Vignola, your gracious host. This week is episode 17. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. This week, we're going to talk about what I consider to be the two most important tools that we have as mixing engineers. We're going to talk about those two, those two tools, what they really mean and why they are effective and what you should be doing when you're using these two tools. So sit back, grab yourself a pad and a pen, take some notes, and we'll get uh, into this thing here. So the two most important tools that we have as mixers, episode 17. Thank you so much for joining me right here on the home recording, madeeasy.com podcast. Okay, okay. Welcome back, everyone, to episode 17. This week, we're going to talk about the two most important tools that we have as mixing engineers. What are they? Why are they so important? Why you should understand these two things more than anything else, and certainly the first two things that every, and I mean every, beginning mixing engineer or home recording musician that wants to mix their own music should know. Those two most important tools are EQ and compression. So let's talk a little bit about this. So the first one, and the most important, if I had to pick which is more important, Dave, EQ or compression? EQ, by far. EQ to me is the most important tool that we have as a mixing engineer. And you may say, well, why do we use EQ? Why is that? Well, let me just talk about a couple of things. I mean, EQs are a lot of things, but really the more important points to take away are, why do we use EQ? We use EQ to shape the sound of instruments so they will sit to sit well together in a mix, right? We use EQ to take all these elements, all these raw recorded tracks, and we sculpt them, and we cut, and we boost, and we carve out, and we do all these things. So when we put all those instruments together in a mix, they sit well together. So it's to shape the sounds of instruments and elements in a mix so they sit well together. That's the first reason why we use EQ. And the second reason is it's to hear the instruments more clearly in a mix. Again, a mix is when you throw all these instruments together, in order to get things to be heard more clearly, we use EQ, okay? So if you don't know how to effectively EQ stuff, not in solo mode necessarily, which we'll talk about, but also in a mix, your mix will never sound professional. It'll always be hard to listen to. You won't be able to hear the different instruments in the mix, whether it's, you know, guitars or vocals or what have you, things will sound muddy. And it all starts with EQ, okay? So now, if you want to learn how to use EQ effectively, if you don't know already, or if you struggle with that, or if this is a concept that's like, yeah, you know, you make a good point, Dave. I'm not really that experienced in EQ. Then I invite you to go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and check out EQ Made Easy. And if you stay till the end of the podcast, I'm going to give you a special gift so you can get a discount on EQ Made Easy. It's been re-recorded, re-released, and completely rebuilt from the ground up for year 2020. It's awesome. You're going to get... Uh, about five hours worth of training, along with all the audio file examples that I'm using in the course so you can follow along so you can get a better handle on how to EQ effectively. It is the most important thing you can do as a mix engineer when you're learning the craft of mixing or how to make your mixes sound better. Learn how to use EQ. Now you have stock EQ, stock plugins, you have third-party plugin EQs and all of that. And we talk a lot about that in EQ Made Easy. And there are differences for sure. And why does one sound different than another? Again, I didn't use the word better. I used the word different. Well, we talk a lot about a lot about that in EQ Made Easy, so I highly recommend it. And from, from a beginner's perspective, um, I recommend you start with your good old stock plugin that comes with, a, with whatever DAW you're using and you learn how to use that EQ most effectively. Okay, so EQ is the most important thing. And I'm surprised, I'm not really surprised, I shouldn't say that, but um. Um, I guess I'm surprised that that a lot of a lot of beginners that have that have taken training um, from other resources and then eventually end up on my doorstep taking some of my training, um, how they weren't really taught that early on when they were learning how to mix. It's one of the first things you learn, or I think the one of the first things that I teach is how I should say it. So that's tool number one. Tool number two is compression. Okay, it's the second most important thing that we have as a mixing engineer. Now, unlike EQ, it's a lot more challenging for beginners, compression is, for a variety of reasons, and we'll talk about that a little bit here. Um, EQ is the easier of the two to learn, 
which is one of the reasons why I think it's one of the first things you want to learn, because uh, in order to be able to dial in and tune your ear, you need to understand the EQ before you jump into compression. But by far, compression is the most misunderstood tool we have, and it's the hardest for a beginner uh, mixer to get their handle on, by far. And you may say, well, what is compression exactly, Dave? If you're someone new and you don't know what compression is, compression is real simple. The simp It's a lot of things, but in its simplest basic terms, simply it's an automated volume control to control the level of a piece of audio, okay? It controls the level of a piece of audio, and we use compression to control the dynamic range of audio to achieve a more consistent and even performance. Okay, so let's take a lead vocal track, for example, okay? Dynamic range. You may say, what is dynamic range? Well, dynamic range is the difference between the quietest piece of audio, you can barely hear me speaking right now, and the loudest piece of audio. Okay, the difference between that quietest part and the loudest part is called dynamic range. And we use compression to control that dynamic range. So it's not so quiet and so super loud. And what a compressor will do in its simplest forms, it will take the loudest part of that performance and it will, uh, it will lower it. And it'll take the quietest part of that performance where you could barely hear it and it will turn it up. And that means the difference between the loudest part and the quietest part is smaller than prior to using compression. What does that do for us? Well, it, it allows us to be able to hear that performance in a much more even tone. And it will be able to hear things that maybe we couldn't hear when the audio was too quiet. Now, again, it gets a lot deeper than that, but that is its most basic and simple way to look at it. So you think of a compressor as an automated volume control to control the dynamic range and even out the performance. Okay, as I just mentioned, a compressor or compression can help bring out the nuance of a performance, like a vocal part typically. You know, you ever experience where you were a singer singing a phrase and they start off real strong, they start off the first verse and they start off the phrase, they got a nice deep breath and they're singing, they're singing, and by the time they get to the end of the line, they run out of breath and they can barely hear the last couple of words at the end of the line. That happens with every singer. They run out of breath, they sing too much, they don't have good breath control, and by the time they get to the end of the phrase, the last two words at the end of the phrase, you don't hear very well. A compressor will help raise that up. It'll take that quiet part, depending on how you set the compressor up, and it'll raise that up so you can hear those words. Okay, so that's uh, something that it can do. So it'll help bring out the nuance of instruments or elements in a mix, okay? Compression on an entire mix, not just on an individual element, but on an entire mix, can make an entire mix sound like it's more life, has a lot more life, has a lot more pump, has a lot more polish, has a lot more vibe. Um, it can bring the whole mix to life. Or if you overuse it and don't use it in the appropriate way, it can make a track sound very flat and very lifeless. And you may say, well, why is that? How, what do you mean, Dave? I don't understand. Well, I'm gonna to try to keep this simple for all my beginners out there. When you use compression on an entire mix, let's say on a master bus, you know, music in general, we talk about dynamic range, right? The difference between the quietest part and the loudest parts. Well, the goal with a compression is not to make everything perfectly even, okay? Because then it's not, and then it's very linear. Dynamic range in a, in a piece of music is what gives the music excitement. There's quiet parts, there's louder parts, there's mid volume parts. It's constantly changing. Not in real drastic ways necessarily, but real subtle ways. It gives the music kind of a, a kind of a bounce, kind of life. I know it's hard to kind of describe it over audio here in a podcast, but it, it gives the music a sense of interest. It sounds interesting when you have, um, you know, it's like a painter that, that paints with, with light and shade, different shades, you know, some dark areas, some bright areas, some in-between areas. It gives the painting a little bit more interest when you look at it. It looks more interesting. Same thing with music. When music changes dynamic range, even even in the most subtlest ways, even if you don't uh, notice it, but your brain uh, notices it and it just has a more interesting feel to it. And compression can help us still retain some dynamic range so it sounds interesting, but also can, in, in, in also control that dynamic range so you don't have things that jump out way too loud, or as I said a couple of seconds ago, or so quiet that you can't even hear the parts, right? So when you overuse compression, you can go to the extreme 
And you can take all that dynamic range and you can squash it so much or compress it so much that now the music doesn't have that bounce anymore. It doesn't have that subtle dynamic range. Everything is very linear and very flat sounding. Think of it as the human voice. Now, when I'm speaking to you right now, my voice is at a pretty constant level. I'm speaking through a compressor right now. I'm using very gentle compression on my voice. And you can hear some of the inflections in my voice. You hear me get a little loud sometimes. You hear me get a little quiet. You hear the emotion in my voice. My voice is changing volume levels, even as I'm talking to you right now in a very subtle way. And as I said, there is a compressor that I'm speaking to, you know, my microphone's being plugged into a compressor and what you're hearing is the compressed vocal, but there's still dynamic range. I'm still getting a little louder. I'm a little quieter. You could hear the change of the level of my voice, but hopefully if I'm doing it correctly, you're not hearing it all of a sudden I'm blasting you out of the speakers and you have to turn down the volume because I just got too loud or now I'm talking and you can't hear me at all. And you have to turn up the volume on your radio again or on your phone because you want to hear what I'm saying. No, the compressor is leveling out my performance enough to where you can hear the lower parts of what I'm talking about, the more quiet pieces, and I'm not blowing it out of the seats with the loudest part of my voice. It's controlling it, but it's not over compressing it. If you over compress it, it could sound something like this or nothing ever changes and there's no inflections in my voice and everything is very linear and everything's very kind of monotonish and right, you get it? No one speaks like that. Right? It's very, no. <laughs> People speak with different tones, different pitches, different, you know, dynamic range. Hope that makes sense. I know it's probably a crappy, you know, analogy, but that's how I kind of think of it. So when you overuse a compressor on a mix, you go from a mix that's really light, has a lot of life and has some dynamic range and it's interesting sounding and you hear different things happening through the course of the mix and then it gets very flat sounding and it just sounds kind of dull and it doesn't sound like it has any punch and it doesn't sound like it has any life. That's the extreme to when you overuse compression. So this is why compression is very difficult for beginners is because compression, the hardest thing about learning how to use compression is learning how to hear compression and know what to listen for. It's the number one thing that is the most challenging for 95% of the new mixers that are out there. It's why I created the course Compression Made Easy. Again, shameless plug on the website. And just like with EQ Made Easy, it's been completely rebuilt, redone, and re-recorded better than ever for year 2020. And if you stay till the end of the podcast, I'm gonna give you a discount code so you can go ahead and you can get that at a discount. Just like EQ made easy, pick them both up. It's the best thing you'll ever invest your money in from a mixing engineering standpoint, but I digress. Um, it's the number one thing that people have trouble with. They don't know how to hear it. They don't know what to listen for because compression when done properly should be done in a very subtle way. Most times, again, I'm using generalized statements, just like with EQ, you don't want to be boosting up the top end so much on everything. Well, that's in most cases, there are times where you need that. There are times where you need to over compress if the tracks were recorded in a way where maybe it needs it, but that's for another episode. That's more advanced techniques for general compression with tracks that are recorded halfway decent. <laughs> and I use that term loosely. Light amount of compression is all you really need. But when you use a light amount of compression for a beginner who can't hear that, the only way they can audibly hear the change with and without the compressor is to over compress so much that when they turn the compressor on and off, they can hear the audible difference. When they hear the audible difference, then they try to dial it in. Nine out of 10 times that audible difference that they're hearing is because there is so much compression that it's over compressed. And when you do that on every individual track in your session, and you let's say have a 20 track session, by the time you get to the master bus, you have squashed that audio so much that the track sounds lifeless. It doesn't have any punch. It doesn't have any vibe. It doesn't have any dynamic range left in it. So that's one of the things that people have a hard time with is how do I hear compression and how do I tune my ear to it? And this is why I created Compression Made Easy because we spend well over an hour doing a lot of A, B, and I teach you how to listen for compression, what to listen for. And we do a lot of before and after so you can tune your ear into compression. Because once you're able to hear it and you're able to recognize it and you're able to tune your ear to it when it's subtle, that is going to change the way you mix. And there's a lot of other 
uh, byproduct benefits of that, which we'll talk about in other episodes. But trust me when I tell you, compression is a hugely important tool. It's the most confusing for beginners. It's the most overused for beginners. And it's something you want to try to get a handle on right away when you first start learning how to mix, just like with EQ. Now, if you've been mixing for a while and you still don't have a handle on it, it's okay. You know, there, it, it, life is not over. You can go back and you can relearn it. It's an e, it's not as difficult to learn as you think if you have the right teacher. And that's what I'm here for, to help you. <laughs> so go check out Compression Made Easy um, and make sure that you understand compression. So our two most important tools are what class? Yes, EQ and compression. EQ being first, compression being second in order of importance, although they do work together. If you have a good handle and know how to use EQ and compression effectively, those two plugins alone, and only those two plugins alone, have the most impact on the sonics of your mix. All the other fancy plugins, tape machines and console emulators and saturators and reverbs and delays and all the fancy stuff that you see on some of my YouTube videos and some of my courses and we talk about on this podcast, pale in comparison to EQ and compression, okay? So I invite you to brush up on your EQ and compression skills if you need some brushing up or even if you don't feel you need some brushing up, we all need some brushing up from time to time. And especially if you're a beginner who struggle with either one of those two topics, I want you to take advantage of the deal I'm about to give you and learn about EQ and compression because those are gonna help you get to a professional sounding mix faster than any other plugin or tool that you can use in your mixing engineer toolbox. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I hope that gives you some food for thought. Now, let me give you uh, a gift. Let me give you a couple of things to help you with learning about EQ and compression. So as I said, we have two courses on the website, EQ Made Easy, Compression Made Easy. Both of those have been redone. They were, the first original courses came out in 2014, 2015. I have revamped them six years later, rebuilt them from the ground up, gave you twice as much content and all the feedback I've gotten over the years, over the original original courses that were so popular, I built some of the things that maybe were missing in the first courses into the new and improved courses for 2020. These are far better than the original courses. And you also, this time around, get the audio files that I'm using in the course so you can practice right alongside with me. I give you lots of practice exercises during the course of EQ and Compression Made Easy. So go check out those two courses and I'm going to give you a discount code. The discount code, coupon code is PODCAST30. If you use that at checkout, you could take 30% off each one of those courses. So you have no excuse to not have those in your library and to really get a handle on EQ and compression. That's the first thing that I wanna give you. The second thing I wanna give you, especially if you're new to Home Recording Made Easy, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and I wanna give you a free mini mixing training course. It's right on the homepage, you can't miss it. You click the big orange button, you'll be able to download it. Um, the mini mixing course uh, is worth probably $49 and to give it to you absolutely free. You're gonna get the audio files as well so you can follow along and mix the song with me. Along with that, you're gonna get a PDF of my five tips to a professional sounding mix so you can apply those tips to the mix that you're working on in the mini mixing training course. And we talk a lot about EQ and compression in, those in that course as well. Get that absolutely free at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And like I said, while you're there, Take a look at the training courses. Use Podcast 30. You could take 30% off any training course, by the way. That Podcast 30 will apply to any of the training courses, not just EQ and compression made easy. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I would like to you, uh, do ask you a couple of favors. Number one, if you like this podcast, if you find this information helpful to you in any way, please give me a thumbs up, share this podcast with others. The better uh, reviews I get, the more shares and likes and the more people that listen to the podcast, it lets me know that you're enjoying this and it allows me and gives me motivation to create more episodes. And speaking of future episodes, I'd like to hear some of your ideas. Send me an email at info at home recording. Made easy.com. 
Again, the link will be in the show notes below. And let me know what kind of topics you'd like me to cover here on the podcast. We've done now 17 episodes. We've covered a lot of ground, but I'd be interested to hear from you, my audience. What things do you want me to talk about? What topics do you want me to cover? I'd love to know what you think. Send me an email today. Let me know. And you, who knows? You may find your, uh, your idea as one of our main topics on a future episode. So until next week, I've been Dave with Home Recording, MadeEasy.com, and MixingMadeEasy.net. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Episode, and I will see, hear, and talk to you next week. Take care, everybody. Thanks.